Blessed be the kingdom of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. And unto ages of ages. Amen. Well, good morning and welcome to St. Peter. I'm Jared, the pastor here. Where our mission is to build the church by developing fully devoted followers of Jesus. Now today in our sermon, we'll begin our next preaching series called Celebrating God's Gifts, uh, all about lives shaped by holy baptism. In fact, and today we'll hear about the uh, costs and the gains of that life, that baptized life. Today's worship is something we all do together, so you're invited to join the congregation's pars, which are in bold type in your bulletins, as well as uh, to sing the songs with us, which are in those Cranberry worship books in front of you. Of course, everything you guys in here will need will be up on that screen. And then for those who are listening or who are watching, as we do each week, we point you over to our website, which is stpeterhallettsville.org. You go to that online drop menu and click on orders, and you can download today's order of service for your participation while you listen on the radio or watch later on YouTube. Now, before we begin, as we do each time, we draw your attention to these ivory connection cards. If you're a regular attender or a member here, we ask that you please fill out your name and either your phone number or your email address. Later on the service, we may all place these in the tall offering boxes um, as you walk past them. And, of course, don't forget the... Uh, <clears throat> Blue prayer request cards on the bench in front of you. As you know, if, <coughs> excuse me, if we can be praying for you or someone you know in a specific way, you can write that down here in the space provided and then place those in the offering uh, boxes as well. Now today we celebrate the 13th Sunday after Pentecost. And in our gospel reading today, we'll hear Jesus speak quite frankly about the cost of discipleship. Those who follow him should know from the outset that completing the course of discipleship will finally mean renouncing all other allegiances. We'll hear more about that later. Then as we hear God's word proclaimed, we join with our song and prayer. I invite you quickly to look at the back of these connection cards. And there's a few simple next steps you may take in offering your life to God today. Following worship this morning, as we do, we've got coffee and snacks over in our fellowship hall. Followed by uh, learning time, the uh, youth and the adults have pastor's Bible study. The children's Sunday school takes a break for the, uh, for the holiday weekend. And let's see. Now we just click the next slide. There we go. And then coming up, uh, it's time to quit worrying about money. Right? Financial Peace University. You'll learn a proven plan that helps you budget, beat debt, build wealth, all those sorts of things. Right? Financial Peace is awesome. Don and I took it uh, as soon as we got married all those years ago, and it has served us well uh, this will be, I guess, St. Peter's fifth time offering the class, so you don't want to miss it. You want to be there, and even if you think it's not for you, it's for someone you know. So let's, uh, yeah, so let's not overlook this. Uh, you can sign up for the class and start a free 14-day trial, financial peace, at uh, fpu.com, put in the, with the class number, slash 1152117. The class starts on Sunday, September 18. Let me just click once more. All right. And then on September 18th, same day, for, uh, we're going to invite uh, all the guys here for our Great Outdoors Sunday. And so we're doing things a little differently. So make sure you invite a guy to come with you that day, right? A guy that doesn't usually go to church. It's the day for him. So we'll decorate in here with an outdoors theme, right? Not only hunting and fishing, but certainly includes that. I'll have my camel stole on at church. Uh, the service will be just one hour long. My message is just 10 minutes long, right? Guys, can I hear an amen for that? Amen. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And, of course, all of you can wear your camo, your fishing shirts, or maybe, I don't know, uh, it's getting close to Oktoberfest time, so maybe if you want to wear your later hose and your hiking boots and your little, you know, uh, Tyrolean hat, that's fine too, I suppose. All right. But uh, camo, fishing, all that kind of fun stuff, great outdoors. Uh, you can bring your own outdoor equipment for us to use for part of the decorations to show off. And at coffee time, how about, uh, how about we all bring some wild game to share, right? We've got to make room in the freezer anyway. So we bring that to share during refreshment time. And then, of course, as we do, we'll bless all of our hunters and fishers for the new license year that just began uh, earlier this week. And then for both of those things, we have in your bulletin just a couple of simple little tickets uh, for you to uh, help you break the ice in bringing this stuff up with somebody else. Class code for uh, financial pieces on there. And, uh, of course, we've got our um, great outdoors on the other side. And, of course, you don't want to overlook our quarterly forgiveness and healing service at the end of September. And then also on your card, you see a service opportunity with our Men in Missions Sausage Supper, right? We do this each year at Houseville's Kalachi Fest. On Friday, we prep. On Saturday, we cook and serve. 
we got room for everybody to help. Just let us know on the card and we'll be in touch. And then don't forget to check all the announcements. Those are in the back of your bulletins. So to stand and take our first step together with our opening song. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess, we confess that, that we are born, born captive, captive to sin, sin and, and cannot free ourselves. We, we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Amen. The mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ, was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority I forgive you, who believe and repent of all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty
pray. Direct us, O Lord God, in all our doings and with your continual help, that in all our works, begun, continued, and ended in you, we may glorify your holy name. And finally, by your mercy, bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Next Steps Weekly Memory Verse is from Psalm chapter 119, verse 135. Let your face shine upon your servant and teach me your statutes. The first reading is from Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 15 through 20. See, I have set before you today life and prosperity, death and adversity. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I am commanding you today by loving the Lord your God, walking in his ways, and observing his commandments, decrees, and ordinances, then you shall live and become numerous, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away and you do not hear, but are led astray to bow down to other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying him, and holding fast to him, for that means life to you and length of days, so that you may live in the land that the Lord swore to give to your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Please respond, congregation, to Psalm 1, the bold print. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on his law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like shaft which the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. The second reading is from Philemon 1 through 21. Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our dear friend and co-worker, to Aphia, our sister, to Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in your house. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. When I remember you in my prayers, I will always thank my God because I hear of your love for all the saints and your faith toward the Lord Jesus. I pray that the sharing of your faith may become effective when you perceive all the good that we do for Christ. I have indeed received much joy and encouragement from your love, because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you, my brother. For this reason, though I am bold enough to Christ to command to you to do your duty, yet I would rather appeal to you on the basis of love, and I, Paul, do this as an old man and now also as a prisoner of Christ Jesus. I am appealing to you for my child, Onesimus, whose father and I have become during my imprisonment. Formerly, he was useless to you, but now he is indeed useful both to you and to me. I am sending him, that is, my own heart, back to you. I wanted to keep him with me so that he may be of service to me in your place during my imprisonment for the gospel. But I prefer to do nothing without your consent in order that your good deed might be voluntary and not something forced. 
Perhaps this is the reason he was separated from you for a while, so that you may, might have him back forever, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a beloved brother, especially to me, but how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. So if you consider me your partner, welcome him as you would welcome me. If he has wronged you in any way or owes you anything, charge that, that to my account. I, Paul, am writing this with my own hand. I will repay it. I say nothing about your owing me, even your own self. Yes, brother, let me have this benefit from you in the Lord. For refresh my heart in Christ. Confident of your obedience, I am writing to you, knowing that you will do even more than I say. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to St. Luke, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now large crowds were traveling with Jesus, and he turned and said to them, Whoever comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and even life itself, cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. <clears throat> For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not first sit down and estimate the cost to see whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it will begin to ridicule him, saying, This fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or, what king, going out to wage war against another king, will not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to oppose the one who comes against him with 20,000? If he cannot, then, while the other is still far away, he sends a delegation and asks for the terms of peace. So therefore, if none of, <clears throat> therefore, none of you can become my disciples if you do not give up all your possessions. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is fit neither for the soil nor for the manure pile. They throw it away. Let anyone with ears to listen hear the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Oh, that the Lord would guide my ways to keep his statutes still. Oh, otherwise with you. It's time to talk about stewardship as we do each fall. Hold on to your wallets, right? Wrong. Wrong. Stewardship is not code for fundraising or building project or anything else, no matter how many times people make that mistake. Stewardship's best summarized is using God's gifts for God's purposes. Some of you probably heard that before, huh? Now, even in our culture of 
free market consumer choices, God still owns it all. All right, Psalm 24, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Psalm 50, God says, for every wild animal, the forest is mine, the cattle on a thousand hills. He lets us manage it for him. Indeed, he intends for us to manage it, to be his stewards. A steward is a caretaker entrusted with someone else's property and duty. I just rewatched the Lord of the Rings movies, and I won't bore you with all the nerdy stuff, but one of the kingdoms there in Gondor, called Gondor, has had, has had no king for centuries in the story. Their true king's family has secretly lived in exile, while the country of Gondor was ruled by a steward of the kingdom. And surely some of those guys were more faithful than others. But the ruling class always knew the throne was not theirs for the taking, no matter what. It was theirs to manage for centuries, until, as the third movie is named, The Return of the King. Our position as God's stewards lasts for our entire lifetimes until Jesus returns. So when then does our life as stewards, our life using God's gifts for God's purposes, begin? On the one hand, it begins at birth, right? Because all human beings generally have the duty of stewardship for God's creation, not just people like us. On the other hand, our own particular call to stewardship is revealed to us in holy baptism, where we are reborn children of God and enlightened with the gift of the Holy Spirit. In other words, in holy baptism, we can now see ourselves as stewards and understand what that means. Whether you're a newborn or an octogenarian, in the water and the word, you are given a full measure of faith and a full share in the kingdom. Well, in earthly terms, each of us has just so much, either as an infant or an adult, inwardly or outwardly, to be used as each of us learns to love God and love neighbor. While we might be tempted to become sentimental and misty-eyed thinking about baptism, we overlook just how divisive baptism is. Do you know any, former, any baptized former Muslims? They'll tell you all about it. Do you know any, how about any uh, baptized former Jews? They will also tell you all about it. Or take a family in which the grandchildren refuse to baptize the great-grandchildren. They'll tell you about it in still a different way. But those aren't really the circumstances of the people in this room. All right, most all of us were baptized as children into families in which baptisms had occurred for generations. And a few of us were baptized sometimes as a condition of getting married. Getting married. Although we can go lots of directions here, the point for us today is that no such thing exists as ish, as in baptized-ish, disciple-ish, Christian-ish, right? Is you is or is you ain't, as the old song goes. Jesus lays it out for us. Either we're following him and paying the cost, or we're not. Now, in a world where we face hardly any cost for our discipleship, one might wonder then if we are in fact doing it correctly, if we're following Jesus' directions. From a certain perspective, Jesus it's just once again explain the first commandment to us, which is what? I am the Lord thy God, and shall have no other gods before me. That's right, you shall have no other gods. Two of you knew that. Shame. All right? Anything on which you set your hopes or your trust is your God. It seems the God of our time is named, it's my choice. That's a topic for another day. But Jesus gives us three illustrations of his point. Building a tower, going to war, and salt losing its saltiness. Right, someone sets out to build a great big building only to be bankrupted by the cost. Someone begins to rattle sabers only to reconsider his odds when he's outnumbered two to one 
and he has to attempt to pay off his angered opponent. Number six, we'll take you a little deeper here with that, uh, with that uh, description on your green study and share inserts. Number six. <coughs> now, in Jesus' time and place, so, <coughs> excuse me, salt was often made by evaporating seawater, which would leave behind the minerals in the water, right? Mostly sodium chloride, plain old table salt, but also some other stuff. Over time, the salt could leach out of that mass, leaving salt with insufficient actual salt. Right? And so all three things, a bankrupted tower, too small of an army, and saltless salt are useless. They're expensive mistakes that will ruin you financially and personally. That's sort of the point Jesus makes about being his follower. Not that being a disciple will ruin you, per se, but that being disciple-ish, being half-hearted, fair weather will ruin you by playing both sides of the fence. You incur all the costs without the gain. The bankrupted tower and the ill-planned war. And neither side wants you when it's all done. Don't start what you can't finish, warns Jesus. No doubt if it was all left up to us, we wouldn't and couldn't finish the road of discipleship. Even less so if we had to make the road and blaze the trail for ourselves. Now it's not because we are not capable people. Right? All manners of accomplishment are present in the congregation and in this room, right? Some accomplishments heroically so. But discipleship is not governed by our understandings of competency and capability. Elsewhere, Jesus will compare discipleship to being like a child. So the measure of discipleship is given to us in our Old Testament reading today. As we heard, loving the Lord your God, obeying him, and holding fast to him. Or several chapters earlier, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. That is discipleship competency. All, not some, not half, but all. All our trust, all our love, all our devotion, all our hope and the like. Jesus doesn't leave us hanging, though, if we but listen. He says, verse 27, Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. And of course, we want to pat ourselves on the back and jump to the carry the cross part. I can do it, Jesus, we say for ourselves. Jesus, it's just like that time I told the cop he only pulled me over because the fish signed on my bumper. I told him he was part of the deep state conspiracy, keeping this country from being great by oppressing God-fearing Christians like myself. No, not at all. Because you're driving 85 and a 55. And then you ran someone off the road and you were tailgating because you didn't want someone to get in front of you. Right? And so it goes. Again and again and again. We are left bankrupted and conquered without any taste or savor or flavor. In other words, useless. Now the other part of that bit from Jesus is follow me. Right? He's the one who makes and shows us the way. Indeed, elsewhere he says, I am the way. He goes first through life to his death and the cross for the sins of the world, right? That includes you and me. Through the grave and on to the resurrection to new life. He begins and he finishes this way for his disciples. To follow him is to go the same way, not the way-ish. It takes more than our want to. In fact, it takes an act of God for us to finish what we start. In holy baptism, we already said that you're given a full measure of faith and a full share in the kingdom. The new eternal life that Jesus promises begins at your baptism. Once upon a time, people were baptized naked, showing that they take nothing into the new life as they are wrapped first with the robe of Christ. In fact, we don't even take our families with us through baptism, at least not as they are construed beforehand. From the infant to the octogenarian, we say that, right at the, at the end of the baptism, you remember this, as a congregation, we say all together that we receive them as a child of the same Heavenly Father, not a mother, 
not a nephew, not a cousin, a fellow child, that is a brother or a sister from the youngest to the oldest. Everything is washed away in baptism. Our sins, certainly, but also our lives, even our claims over our possessions and our families. And yet we gain something else, something valuable beyond price. By grace, we are joined to the death and resurrection of Jesus. His faithfulness, His righteousness become our own as we hear in Psalm 1. His way of the cross through life, death, and on to new life has now become our own. All that we possessed before, all that we thought was ours to do with as we pleased for ourselves, families, careers, hobbies, tools, toys, equipment, vacations, retirements, nest eggs, houses, all of it, even our own personal sense of discipleship gets pushed away and out to the sides so they do not block the road of discipleship, so they do not become between us and Jesus, so they do not siphon away our all, leaving us with only some or half, but not all of our hearts, souls, and mights. All these things have a new place, not as our choices to make as we please, but rather as God's gifts to be used for God's purposes. And guess what? God never runs out. You can't outgive God. One of God's purposes for us is to follow Jesus, to be his disciples for all we're worth, all of our lives. He's not going to let us get started and then tell us to finish things on our own. That's why he's the way. It's not our way. He simplifies it for us. He makes us stewards of all the stuff, even of our own hearts, minds, souls, and mites. Because he's provided something better than our families, than a tower, than a war, than salt, than even life itself. He has given us, by his grace, new life as his very own possessions, following his son, Jesus. Amen. We believe in one, in one God, God, the Father, the, Father, the Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray in the name of Jesus to our Heavenly Father for the church, the world, and one another. Gracious Father, teach us what true discipleship is by your Spirit. Give us the faith and steadfastness to bear its cost. Thank you for so clearly setting before us the way of blessing and curse, of life and death. Thank you for the grace to choose the life you offer through the death and resurrection of your Son. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the church around the world. Make it holy and blameless, wise and loving 
fearless and compassionate in equal measure. Make it delight in your law and proclaim your gospel. Establish its roots in the living waters flowing from Christ, its head, and its life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the people and ministries of this congregation. Help us to meditate on your word day and night. Give us grace to forgive, faithfulness to serve, and joyfulness to worship. We pray for our mission to develop fully devoted followers of Jesus and to support Solid Rock, our mission in action. Use us to lead many people to those streams of living water in which is found true life in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for persecuted Christians, for missionaries, for seminary professors and students, and for all pastors and evangelists. Give them wise and humble hearts. Use them to bring the healing and saving gospel to those whom the world has despised and rejected. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our nation and its leaders and for the people and leaders of every nation on earth. Help all of us to walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers, but instead to delight in your law, to meditate on your will, and to practice doing it so that we may live before you in peace and righteousness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your Son dignified our labor by sharing our toil. Be with your people wherever they work. Make leaders of industries and commerce of this land responsive to your will. Give us pride in what we do. Be the strong refuge of those who suffer want and anxiety from lack of employment. Help all who are able to work to find suitable and fulfilling employment and receive just payment for their labor. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you and praise your name for sending the gentle and soaking rain. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for everyone who needs your mercy and loving kindness, especially Esther Castello, Michelle Keegan, Shell Stillians, El Rose Ayler, Betty Warren, Jaron Woods, Charlotte Hopkins, Shelley Posey, Audrey Peterson, Dick Lee, Alton Belushek, Alan and Arlene Rasmussen, Patricia Boyle, Irene Gulmo, Carl Teakin, Janie Andrews, Kerrigan Barrero, Jean Apple, St. Peter's Elevator, Dylan McCord, Jeffrey Morganroth, Charlie Garman, Carrie Bezetsny, Dwayne Dixon, Evelyn Lashinsky, James Evans, Missionary Pastor John Schmidt and Family of Ghana, First Responders, Safe House Church, San Miguel and Transfiguration Lutheran Churches, President Biden, our country, and those facing unrest and unemployment. Refresh their hearts, heal whatever is wounded, and restore them to fellowship with all who love them, as we recall Paul's words to Philemon. We lift before you the plight of all who, even in this day, are slaves. Deliver them from bondage and let us always claim them as kindred for whom Christ has died. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy and loving Father, with gratitude and affection, we entrust into your care our beloved dead. We pray for the families of Earl and Colin Howe, Daryl Groff, Leroy McKeska, Myron Rain, Liz Nunley, Janice Tilchik, James Roder, Colleen Hull, Hall, Jody Baker, and Helen Teakin Shaper. Through your Holy Spirit, strengthen us in our vocation as disciples of Lord Jesus, so that, not, not counting the cost, we always bear faithful witness to him. For his sake, bring us into your presence to be numbered with all those who serve, worship, and adore you in glory ever, ever, everlasting. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the power of the Holy Spirit, we entrust our prayers and petitions into your 
hands, gracious Father, for the sake of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and also, also with you. you. As we do each week, it's time for us to, of course, mention our offering very quickly. For those who are listening and watching, but you guys in the room as well, I remind you that over there on our website, you can learn about the different ways you can give your offerings. If you brought it with you, of course, you can place it here in the box. You can also mail it. You can also uh, give electronically. All the details are up there on the website. Now, in his great love, our gracious God richly provides for our needs in everyday life. And he takes these gifts from us and makes them into a banquet, a blessing through the mission and ministry of this congregation. So he makes us ready to share with all in need and to serve our neighbors with joy, all for the sake of Jesus our Lord. Yeah. Let's stand and sing our offering song, I Am Jesus, Little Lamb. I am Jesus, Little Lamb, ever glad at heart I am. For my shepherd gently guides me, knows my need. Loves me every day the same, even calls me by my name. Let us pray. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth fruit from the earth and nourish us with your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care. And prepare us now to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right and sound you who tarry. That we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name You are indeed holy, almighty, and merciful God. You are most holy and great is the majesty of your glory. You so loved the world that you gave your only Son, that whoever believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Having come into the world, he fulfilled for us your holy will and accomplished our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broken and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, 
shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and his promise to come again, we give thanks to you, Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. And we implore you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit, to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine, that we and all who share in the body and blood of your Son may be filled with heavenly peace and joy, and receiving the forgiveness of sin, may be sanctified in soul and body, and have our portion with all your saints. All honor and glory are yours, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in your church, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Those who are listening or watching as we do each week, we remind you that you're encouraged to concentrate, reflect, and meditate on the blessings bestowed upon us, cultivating your own heart and mind and earnest desire for the sacrament in which we are promised that with the bread and the wine, Jesus' body and blood are given and shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Communion will be administered here at the railing. As you come forward, you may stand or kneel. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious jewel. Lord, to give up but be a fool. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Jesus, precious Lamb. Taking my sin, my cross, my shame, rising again, I bless your name. You are my all in all. When I fall down, you pick me up. When I am dry, you fill my cup. You are my all in all. Precious Lamb of God, worthy is your name. May the body and blood of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which you have now received, strengthen you, keep you in His grace, and preserve you into life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. And we pray that in your mercy, you would strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you for joining the worship today. Certainly to you folks in the room, but also to those who are uh, listening on the radio or watching later on YouTube. As we always do at the end, we're going to remind you that there at the website, we keep useful stuff up there, videos, sermons, podcasts, and those Bible studies are there under the blog heading for the study and sharing series. Those are uh, simple ways to encourage you in your own stewardship and also to help you, to equip you, to encourage others in their stewardship of using God's gifts for God's purposes in everyday life. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.
serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.